further debate? The member from Orleans? B to Z Stork? Sure. Thank you, Madam Speaker. By now, it is clear the Strong Mayors Building Homes Act is not a bill about housing. Don't let the title fool you. This bill is designed to give the provincial government more power in municipal affairs, not build more homes. As I came to find out through my readings of the bill, the text fails to mention housing even once. This is just unacceptable, Madam Speaker. Ontarians need affordable housing options now more than ever, and it seems that buying a home is simply becoming a pipe dream under this government's power. My first proposed amendment to this bill was a duty to ensure housing is built. It read, the, the head of council has the duty of ensuring that the amount of new housing built within the city in each year is proportionately sufficient to meet the goal of building 1.5 million new units of housing in Ontario by 2031. It went on to require the government to assess the number of new homes being built and provide a progress report to ensure transparency in order to reach measurable goals. As they say, that what, which gets measured gets done. But my amendment was deemed out of scope. How will the government be held accountable without a system in place to track their lofty goal of building 1.5 million homes in 2031? With the way this bill is written, the government sorry, with the way this bill is written, the government has zero <laughs> has zero obligation to report back about how many homes are actually being built. That will let Ontarians down and continue to accelerate the housing crisis we are in. This bill will do nothing concrete to build 1.5 million homes by 2031. I am also concerned with the types of housing we are talking about. Nowhere does this bill mention any details of this. Do we intend to build more co-op housing, affordable rental housing, laneway and guarded suites, duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, stacked townhomes, supportive housing, missing middle options, or are we just intending to build single-family detached homes, taking up a huge environmental footprint and housing one single family? We know full well, or we had better know, that the latter single-family detached homes will never, ever solve this housing crisis. So are we including a plethora of housing options anywhere and everywhere? And are we making them as of right? And what is this bill actually going to address? The serious problem of vacant homes. My second amendment to the bill would require the government to take an inventory of vacant homes and have a duty to reduce this list by 50% every four years. This amendment was obviously deemed out of scope and principle, again, we need creative solutions to this affordability crisis, and the government has a responsibility to look at all options, including how we can fill these vacant homes. There is a four-bedroom home in my neighbourhood that has been vacant for close to 30 years. We cannot have homes sit empty in a housing crisis. Why not utilise all the housing that we already have available? The government claims this bill is meant to remove barriers in order to build more homes. Why not simply use the provincial powers we have to do this? Why do we need this strong mayor's bill? As a former Toronto City Councillor, I know firsthand the effects that strong mayor's building homes bill will have on our municipal governments in Toronto and Ottawa, should the mayors choose to use the powers outlined in the text. Allowing a mayor to have the power to choose the chairs of all committees and boards is a slippery slope. These chairs should represent the needs of the city as a whole, not be appointed because they're friends with the mayor, not to mention the allowing them to veto bylaws when they choose so choose. This threatens municipal democracy. People vote for a city council to represent them and the needs of their riding. We need to keep this sanctity. We owe it to voters in these cities. In, in Toronto, we have also seen the strong powers idea isn't needed to advance housing projects. Just this past June, the Toronto City Council unanimously approved the results of the 2021 Open Door Affordable Rental Housing Call for Applications. 
a total of 17 affordable renting ho rental housing projects representing approximately 920 affordable rental homes were approved. Furthermore, in July this year, Toronto City Council approved more than 24,000 new homes, including 2,060 affordable and 2,413 purpose-built rental units and 775 rental replacement units. Once again, this bill is not needed and is absolutely not about advancing housing projects. When I was City Councillor in Beaches East York, I spearheaded laneway suites, a game-changing planning policy that allows people to age in place and adds to the Toronto rental stock. It was an effort to address the housing crisis. I worked tirelessly with fellow Councillor Anna Balau, city staff, local architect and planning experts, community groups, facilitators and Toronto residents. Evergreen brickworks and lanescape were instrumental in the creation of our plan. Our public engagement was over the top. We reached out all across the city to engage with everyone, to hear their thoughts and to learn their ideas. We hosted walks and talks, both ward-specific community consultations and citywide events, surveys, local canvases, you name it, we did it. The highlight of our outreach was actually hearing from people who had never participated, ever, in a democratic forum. And we're now chomping at the bit to have their say in this outside-of-the-box housing idea. By and large, residents were supportive of laneway suites, especially families eager to promote intergenerational living. City staff had many concerns and questions initially, but we looked at examples from other municipalities across Canada, already successful providing laneway housing options, and we found answers and solutions to their inquiries. We came up with a solid plan and reached out to all members of City Council repeatedly to ensure they were in the loop and to garner support. Thanks to our creative and collaborative approach, the City of Toronto's first ever laneway housing policy passed unanimously at City Council. A rare feat indeed. Laneway Suites was just phase one of the plan to offer more housing options in Toronto. Now the Garden Suites policy has just passed through City Council too. And I did all of this without a strong mayor's bill. It can be done, it has been done, and it can continue to be done. Housing can be built with current council configuration and housing can be expedited with existing provincial policies. We simply have to utilize them. Sure, this bill works for our current government, but what does the government expect to happen if a NIMBY mayor were to be elected? One who isn't interested in advancing housing projects. Where do the shovels in the ground go then, Mr. Speaker? Miss Madam Speaker, sorry. So great to see a woman in that chair. If this bill included my proposed amendments, we would have a way to hold any and every mayor accountable for building more homes. The public, too, is confused by Strong Mayor's Building Homes Act. I was in committee when the government brought many stakeholders down to Queen's Park to discuss this bill. These stakeholders were from various building associations, municipal associations, planning associations, and more. People took time out of their busy schedules to have their voices heard on a bill they thought was aimed at building homes. But why, Madam Speaker, did the government waste the time of stakeholders and government resources if housing is outside the scope of the bill? We're in a housing crisis in this province. There are simply not enough homes for those who need housing and want to live here, especially in the biggest and busiest cities, Toronto and Ottawa. The strong mayor's building homes bill fails to address the actual housing problem. This was made clear when my amendments were deemed out of scope and principle by the Committee on Heritage, Infrastructure and Cultural Policy. They claimed housing was out of scope for this bill after using the time of stakeholder and government resources to create the illusion they want to build more homes. That is not their intention, Madam Speaker. This bill is meant for the provincial government to have a strong hold on municipal affairs, and it affects our democracy. I oppose this bill and will be voting against it. Madam Speaker, I urge the government to put forth a housing bill with real tangible goals that will actually aid the housing crisis in this province and truly get shovels in the ground. Thank you. Question? The House Leader? No, I, I just, uh, I was just listening to, uh, to the member's speech and uh, I guess uh, two questions. Uh, I'm just wondering if she sought unanimous consent on, on committee to uh, have her amendments actually heard. I know she's very critical of the chair. She does have that option uh, and I'm told that she didn't do that. But more importantly, I was really intrigued by the laneway, uh, that her approval for laneway suites, I think that was recently, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure when she said it, but I know in Markham we actually approved laneway suites in 1995. Uh, and they've been going, you know, cutting edge Markham. 1995 we did it. I'm wondering if she could uh, contrast uh, uh, the length of time it took uh, Toronto to get to uh, laneway suites in comparison to uh, York Region. From Beaches North York. This year. Yeah, the first part of your um, question, but I will say that um, my uh, I work well with everyone, including the chair of committee, and um, my amendments were not late. They, it was a, a soft deadline, as you know, at committee, so there was just um, confusion, I think, um, by the minister, but that will, we can talk about that later. Laneway suites versus garden suites, I think um, what you mean is garden suites was just recently passed by City of Toronto. It was phase two of our plan, of my plan with laneway suites. And laneway suites um, happened in my time. I ran uh, for city council on term limits, so I was only there for two terms, uh, eight years. I knew that going in. That was my pledge to um, uh, level the playing field for democracy and uh, um, bring uh, gender equity, youth, and uh, or women to to Toronto City Hall. Um, so I knew I only had eight years to get things done. And uh, laneway suites happened under my, in my time, under me, because I was there. I can't attest for why it didn't happen further than that. Kudos to you for it already existing in your neighbourhood, but it happened um, in my second term of office in Garden Suites now. The member from Nickelbelt. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and uh, thank you to the member from uh, Beaches East York. I was just uh, going to ask her a similar question I've asked already, is that when you look at this bill, uh, when you look, the title talks about housing, the bill does not. Uh, who do you think will benefit from the passage of this bill, and who do you think could be hurt by the passage of the Strong Mayor uh, in Building Homes Act? Member from Chesney, York. Bill would be uh, Ontario residents who want housing if it were about housing, which was my hope when I read the title. As where most Ontarians are reading that title, um, Strong Mayor's Building Housing Act, and they are under the guise that it is actually about housing. So we're in a housing crisis, and people want to. Uh, see housing built, all types of housing, not just single family homes, because that is, uh, single family detached homes will never solve our housing crisis. It will take all types of housing, and um, you know, we need people uh, to understand that. And um, people, it would hurt. Well, I, I think it hurts democracy if it's not actually about building homes, which we found that out at committee. Um, Response. When my amendments were, were, uh, viewed as out of scope and principle. So I really hope that we can build housing in our time in the next four years here. Quick question, quick response. The member from... Um, I'd like to thank the member for her uh, remarks, but I, I would like to ask about uh, your, your amendment uh, to measure things. You know, if you can't measure something, you can't manage it. So can you tell me why you put that amendment forward uh, and why you think it was lacking in the bill? I actually think this is to build 1.5 million homes in 10 years, which is um, an incredible goal. And so a government who wants to build th that many homes in that short of time would be proud to have their housing um, construction tracked monitored and to showcase to the world that they actually are doing what they're saying they're doing. So I can't imagine why the government would be against a tracking bill that regularly reports back and shows the success of, of the housing construction that they have initiative. I cannot fathom that it would be uh, ruled out of scope 